evening, everyone. Um, it looks like it's about set a little after 7.05, so I want to make sure that we start on time. So if you can make your way uh, to a seat here, and um, we're welcome to, hi. Welcome to grab some water, coffee, or cookies on the side. We also have some handouts in the back as well. Um, and then make your way to a seat, and we'll get started. represents you and the Milpitas community and has been instrumental in leading this project to fruition. So thank you for being here tonight, Dr. Santos. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for coming and thank you for working with us. I said I'm Richard Santos, the vice chair of Santa Valley Water District and your director. Uh, let me see, there's somebody who can't choose off of there? I don't name now. Anybody else? No? Any other officials we met today with a couple of the uh, city council members with the global based issue and so on. So if they come in, let me know. Uh, this project has uh, been listed to you and has been working hard to uh, <clears throat> resolve the items. I want to remind everyone that our main focus is on flood protection for the Milpitas. Business, homeowners for everybody in the city of Milpitas. Getting the flood protection project into its construction phase takes a lot of time, effort, and resources. We are fortunate to have the project permitted and funded with construction work in progress. Providing flood protection to this community can't be delayed. We don't know what the next big storm is gonna come. So we've got to be prepared for that. So therefore we are doing everything we can to make sure everything's all skilled. We have many of our uh, of our community members paying thousands of dollars for flood insurance and are looking forward to the financial relief that this flood protection project will provide. Permits, regulatory agencies, and funding is just about impossible. It's very difficult. If this project isn't built or is delayed, not only will the community be forced to continue to pay for flood insurance, but it will also result in many other people having to obtain and pay for flood insurance that they aren't currently required to pay. There's a lot of things we want to do. I want to thank Knock and our staff and all the people here and also the city of Malpitas. We met numerous times during this last month. We try to make sure that everybody understands what's going on and how vital flood protection is. I appreciate everybody coming and uh, we're here to answer questions. We have up the, uh, the staff will be working with everybody. I'm here if you need something. So with that, thank you very much and I'll be back Kristen. Thank you, Director Santo. All right, so just to give a quick recap of where, how we're getting here today. So the last time we met in May and we presented a new modified flood wall design option and we heard your feedback. So tonight we're here to share the evaluation that we worked on of the modified design options on the, since the May meeting and discuss the next steps for the Edgewater Drive section, which is one piece of the overall Lower Berryessa Creek flood protection project that provides flood protection to approximately 2,400 homes, schools, and businesses in Milpitas. So before we get started, I'd like to review the meeting objectives and ground rules. All right, so the meeting objectives tonight are to share what we've worked on since the May 10th meeting, are to inform of the next steps for the section along Edgewater Drive, to reinforce our commitment to ongoing communication with the community, and to answer your questions. So, I just want to uh, 
get a show of hands if we're all in agreement with the objectives of the meeting tonight. So if you can raise your hand if we're all in agreement that this is what we'll discuss. Okay. How about in the back over there? Okay. Great. All right. And now I'm going to go over the ground rules for the meeting. So the ground rules that we have set here are to listen, um, that one person speaks at a time, to raise your hand to speak. We will have a staff roaming in the audience with microphones, so when they get to you, then that's how we'll take turns uh, with the questions. And to keep an open mind to others' perspectives. I know there's a diverse amount of perspectives within the room, so we want to be able to take the time to hear from everyone and then five, to be respectful of each other. So could I just get a show of hands if everybody's in agreement with the ground rules for how we'll conduct ourselves tonight? Great, thank you so much. So uh, following these ground rules and the meeting objectives will help us to keep the meeting focused and to keep it moving. So we wanna make sure we have time um, to focus on that Q&A section that we heard that you wanted more time for. So uh, now I'd like to introduce Nock Nguyen, and he's the Interim Deputy Operating Officer for Watersheds. And the Lower Berryessa Creek Flood Protection Project is one of the projects um, um, that he oversees. So I'm gonna hand it over to him for the short presentation. Thank you. Uh, uh, good evening, before I start, uh, I just want to uh, recognize uh, some people, staff, water district staff, that. Uh, that have been helping me with this project. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to recognize that there's Nina Hawk in the back there. She's the Public Works Director for City of Thank you for coming tonight. And with me tonight, we have uh, Jose Villarreal, uh, Kristen Ye Yasukawa, uh, Diego Barragan, uh, Peggy Lam with our communication office, with the engineering team, we have Carl Newman, uh, James Meditekos, Johan Lee, and Kevin Gonzalez. So thank you for helping me. The map that I have in, uh, in front, uh, just quickly, I just want to review the uh, project alignment with you. Uh, looking at the map, uh, the bottom of the map is the, the south, and the top of the map is the north water basically flows from the south to the north towards San Francisco Bay. Uh, the alignment along Berryessa Creek that you see there, the alignment in green is what we refer to as the Upper Berryessa Creek Flood Protection Project uh, that is being constructed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, it is in the second year of a two-year construction project. Uh, that will be finished by December 2017. Uh, the project alignment in red is what we refer to as the Lower Berryessa Creek Flood Protection Project being uh, planned, designed, constructed by the Santa Clara Valley Water District. The two tributary creek uh, that you see there Uh, it's Tulacitos Creek and Calera Creek are two tributary creeks that discharge also into Berryessa Creek Project and those two creeks are part of the Lower Berryessa Creek Project as well. They are in Phase 3 uh, which will be designed and built after we're done with the Phase 2. Phase 2 is the main stand of Berryessa Creek Project. The map in front of you here, uh, it shows the existing information that we have about the flood plain. Uh, this flood map is being prepared by VTA, the water district, uh, to prepare for this project. Uh, this map is based on existing hydrologic information uh, the dimension of the creek and the current topography of land surrounding the creek uh, along Berryessa Creek 
uh, area. I'm sorry, the star show uh, the approximate, approximate location of the Beresford uh, community. This map that I'm showing in front of you is the projection after the Berryessa Creek projects are done. Uh, this is the floodplain uh, The circle shows the uh, Beresford community. Uh, it shows that the Beresford community is out of floodplain uh, based on the existing information after the project is done. And the next slide just shows a, a zoom in a view of the area. Uh, the hash mark shows that the area is not in the projected floodplain after the project is done. And just quickly uh, review for you, uh, this project uh, started uh, in 2003 with the early planning phase, and there have been a number of uh, communication, uh, public meetings uh, throughout the planning phase uh, for the project when the water district staff started working on planning for this flood protection project. So it went from planning to design phase. Uh, again, uh, the slide, the information in front of you show a number of meetings, uh, communication that we have about the project. And uh, in December 2011, that was when the Water District Board of Directors certified the environmental document for the project, basically gave the approval as a public agency uh, for us to begin design, obtain permits, and then proceed with construction. Uh, and as many of you remember, we started meeting here soon after November of 2016 uh, when we had that uh, incident uh, with high rain that overpowered the temporary diversion structure that we had in the, in the creek uh, that caused the flooding of along uh, Edgewater uh, dry uh, in November and then we started meeting with the community ever since and the last meeting that we had uh, was May 10th also in this room uh, I quickly reveal for uh, the community the options that we were looking at uh, based on input from the community uh, and that in the time frame of four weeks to six weeks uh, that we would be back here to inform you of the direction how the district is moving forward with, with the project and that's my objective tonight is to go over the information with you and then inform you uh, the direction that we are moving with this project. Uh, quickly uh, in front of you uh, just a quick overview we do have poster uh, layout around the room just in case for uh, new people that haven't seen these before. Uh, but most of you look very familiar. So uh, just quickly, uh, option number one, uh, as an alternative to the ori original flood wall that we talked about before is the option of pushing the flood wall 15 feet uh, from its current design position toward the creek, uh, pushing it away from Edgewater Drive and on the land side, on the Edgewater Drive side, uh, we would fill in an, a soil embankment uh, to provide uh, area for planting uh, for uh, you know, more visual uh, impact, uh, to lessen the visual impact uh, from the flood wall. Uh, on top of the, uh, a portion of the flood wall on top of the embankment, will still have to be exposed at about 42 inches and mainly it's for fall protection because uh, we don't want people to climb up there and then fall off on the other side which is about 14 foot drop into the creek. 
option number two is similar to option number one, uh, but this option, uh, a, a variation is that the soil embankment will be filled all the way to the top of the flood wall. Uh, so there will be no flood wall portion exposed at the top of the soil embankment. Now because there is still a 14 foot drop into the creek, so option number two has a 42 inch chain link fence at the top as a fall detection, fall prevention measure uh, for this option. And because the soil embankment is going to be filled up all the way to the top of the flood wall, we don't have enough room uh, to uh, at the at the base of the soil embankment. So you see a, a short retaining wall about four four feet high there uh, to in order to do option two. Option number three that I went over with you the last time. Uh, Again, the flood wall is being proposed to be pushed in 15 feet also away from the current position uh, toward the creek. And on top, there would be uh, a four foot wide walking path at the top of the soil embankment. Uh, in order to do this option, uh, we will need to have a short retaining wall at the bottom, at the base of the soil embankment in order to retain the soil in order to have room uh, for that four foot wide walking path on top. And at the top of the soil embankment, there will be a portion of the flood wall uh, exposed uh, about 42 inches. Again, it's for fall uh, prevention measure protection. And at the bottom is the uh, original design uh, that we have and uh, that is the 14 foot high a flood wall about approximately five feet away from the curve of Edgewater Drive and that's the original design. Uh, the only difference here is that uh, we show in with the surfacing of the flood wall instead of the proposed uh, slip fin vertical line uh, along the uh, flood wall, as you see along the freeway, uh, here we show in uh, what we call a field stone uh, surface that makes it look like boulder rock uh, on the surface of the uh, flood wall. Uh, I want to quickly review with you the information that uh, my team uh, did in the last month. Uh, check in with our upper management uh, about different options that we have and we look at the options that I presented you, the three options all of the options that we show you uh, require significant redesign effort uh, what that means is that it requires the water district to submit a permit amendment uh, to all the regulatory agencies including the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, uh, U.S. Uh, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, and San Francisco Bay Regional Water Quality Control Board, uh, because each of the options that we looked at uh, require significant design change. Uh, what it does is that it narrow the creek corridor by 15 feet and move in mitigation planted area. Uh, throughout the uh, alignment of the project uh, and that will require significant review and possible uh, additional mitigation uh, by the regular, regulatory agency. Uh, the original permit that we did, it took us three years uh, to obtain the permit uh, with the permit with the design change and moving forward with applying for a permit amendment, uh, we can only estimate that the best case scenario, it would take six months. Uh, it could take up to nine months, 12 months, or it could take more than a year. Uh, and I, I just cannot predict with the type of changes that we are proposing 
and how long it will take. And the additional uh, mitigation for uh, impact to aquatic habitat and riparian along the creek. Uh, there is no prediction, at least from our court, uh, how much more mitigation uh, that the agency would require and uh, that will cause a lot of additional cost if we are uh, able to find additional land for mitigation uh, and all of the delay of additional time needed to go through the permitting phase, six months, nine months, uh, a year, or more than a year. And if you notice, work, construction work uh, in the creek is only allowed between uh, June and October 15. Uh, so any delay will cause uh, delay to construction at least a year because we are only allowed the creek between June and October. Uh, our guesstimate at this time is a year delay to the construction project to wait for permits uh, will cost us at least four to six million dollars. Uh, additional mitigation will be on top of that. We just don't have any way to predict how much more mitigation uh, that the agency would require for the type of design changes that we are thinking about. Just quickly, the benefit for proceeding with the project. Uh, you heard Director Santos mention uh, earlier on, uh, flood protection is the primary objective for the water district. And we work very closely with the city of Bupitas as well to make sure that our work provide a flood protection benefit for the community. Our goal is to provide the flood protection uh, to the community as soon as possible to the original uh, completion date that we uh, that we set up, which is December 2018. And uh, just roughly uh, with an average of uh, 1000 about $1,100 per year for flood insurance premium, uh, just on an average. Uh, with 2,400 parcels protected, uh, there is a cost saving there of about $2.6 million per year if you are required to purchase flood insurance. And there are people uh, along Mariasa Creek that are in the current flood lane that are paying, that are required to be purchasing flood insurance until our projects are done. Uh, the original uh, design, uh, we already secured a permit, we already have contract, uh, we already have funded, allocated, fully funded uh, for construction. So our goal is to look at all of the risks and costs and the need for flood protection. Uh, we have decided to move forward again with the original design. Uh, so started immediately, uh, we will resume uh, construction of the flood wall in the Edgewater Drive. Uh, and that's the direction that we are moving. And with the recent experience of flooding in the city of San Jose, uh, flood protection is very important to us, uh, to the community, to the city of Eupetus, to the water, Santa Clara Valley Water District, and to the community uh, living along Berryessa Creek that, that is waiting for these flood protection projects to be completed. And, and with that, I just want to end with uh, the pictures of rendering of the uh, original design. Uh, that is the 14 foot high flood wall. Uh, the location is approximately, the alignment of the flood wall is approximately 5 feet from the curve of Edgewater Drive. So just to give you, uh, if you want to visualize that. So from the curve of Edgewater Drive, approximately five feet into 
the river, there will be uh, the flood wall uh, being built there. The five foot walking path there uh, will be constructed again at two. Uh, it's the existing walking path that the community has. So, so what's next uh, after this? Uh, we uh, will resume construction in this area uh, with the original design, uh, and uh, you will see or you will uh, expect to see uh, construction equipment, uh, drilling, installing pile, uh, building wall, uh, grading, and all of these activities will be occurring from the creek side inside the chain link fence uh, that you see along Edgewater Drive. Uh, so all of the construction activities should be inside the uh, security fence in there. And with that, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Kristen and, uh, so that we can begin the discussion. Thank you, Nock. And, oh, great, Kevin's hitting the lights. So uh, thank you for that uh, presentation, Nock. Before we head into questions, I just want to recognize um, Anurag Paul, who's here representing uh, Assemblymember Canton Shoes Office. So Anurag, thank you for being here tonight. Um, and I just want to set up the question and answer portion. So this is the time where you can ask questions and staff will provide responses. Jose and Diego both have microphones here. And so we're going to tag team. So if you have your hand raised, they will come to you and then they'll we'll take turns going from Diego's mic to Jose's mic just so that we can keep the questions moving. Um, I do also want to also point out that in the back we have a frequently asked questions sheet, so if you're welcome to pick up one of those. If there's a series of questions here that have responses. And then we also have a comment submittal form. So if you have a comment you'd like to make, we welcome you to make it verbally tonight. We also do encourage you to write those comments down, and if you would like a response or you know an officially recorded, we can provide your name and contact information as well, but we'll be counting these um, feedback forms as well. So those are in the back and there are pens available. All right, so I think I'll start with, if anyone has any questions, we'll take the first hand. All right. So thank you all staff for the hard work. Since uh, Mr. Nguyen mentioned about the project has been permitted, uh, since also the staff spent so much time working on the slides, it should be very easy to show the skill permit from the uh, Department of Fish and Wildlife and also from the uh, State Water Party. And also, uh, in last meeting, right before May, uh, May, the, May uh, the meeting in May, May 10th, I think in May 9th, Christine, you sent me a response to all my questions, which regarding to the EIR amendment, and in the response number two, dated May 9th, it's saying, therefore, preparation EIR amendment is appropriate under CEQA. The district plans to file a notice of determination for the EIR amendment with the Santa Clara County Clerk recorded, Recorder's Office in the next several days. We'd like to know the status. So um, I can actually respond to that one, Mr. Chu, your question about the response. So I believe just um, a day later we sent a corrected response. Um, that was what the direction was at the time, but um, it had changed uh, with additional evaluation. So that's why we had the corrected response on May 10th. That was uh, shared with you in the community. And then I also turned. Yeah, copies of the permits are in the back of our construction spec. I believe that you do have the file. Yes. I can read it. You can show the item. We don't need to hear the permits. But you asked for the permit. So, so my response to you is that the permits are in the back of the specification. And 
also, the purpose of this project is to increase the width of the channel bottom, not to reduce. So the permit for the water, so six to nine feet, and the permit for water quality board, the levy along the southwest side of the creek will be lower, removed, and replaced with small wall between six to nine feet, feet suddenly. And then the in-stream bench for the impairment, uh, uh, impairment, impairment street is up to 30 feet wide. So the permit for the fish and wildlife only permitted to do six to nine feet of wall uh, above the adjacent ground. And the permit for the water quality wall only permitted to use this 30 feet of impairment street in the middle. And right now it's 50 feet in the middle. So both permits you are violated. So please, so because you said you're going to do the project while not Mr. Chu, we will continue to have disagreement on the height of a flood wall. The 5 to 8 feet or 5 to 9 feet flood wall is based on existing ground. In the area Edgewater Drive, there is an existing levee of about 8 to 9 feet high. So if you add 5 to 8 feet flood wall on top of that, the total height of the flood wall will be about 14 feet. So that, that's info, the information. Now, because in the Edgewater Drive area, we have to demolish the levee uh, because we need room uh, for the area there. Uh, so the flood wall from the existing ground, the base of the ground to the top now, you will see 14 feet, not five to nine feet on top of the existing levee. Okay, so we will continue to have disagreement there. So uh, I don't think it's, it's productive to continue with the question like that. We have gone through the question, your contention, your disagreement with us on how we wrote the EIR and how the EIR is interpreted. And staff and I have been in front of you at least three or four times going over the same question again. And I don't think it's productive to continue that same question further. Uh, we will continue to have disagreement there. So we're not going to reach an agreement magically at this meeting. between 13 to 14 feet depending on where you are. So, you know, 13 and a half feet, 14 feet. It, it's, with, it's within range there, depending on where you are. Uh, you asked about the walking path between the curb and the base of the flip wall. Uh, it will be uh, four feet, about four feet there from the curb to the base of the flip wall. It will be level ground, and it will be compacted with what we call uh, some uh, greenlet, right? Greenlet material. Basically, what you have existing now, it will be similar to what you have existing now, and it will continue to be served as a, a four foot, two foot walking path for the community there. Yes, 14. 
the the 14 feet is is the maximum we would go. And 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 you have heard the explanation why it need to be at 14 feet. Question over here. I could you please show the map to show like the, the houses which will get relief from flood insurance? Yes. Yeah. Market is uh, they will be exempt from flood insurance, and you mentioned 2,400 houses. Is that correct? Correct. So that means the uh, the ones with wet marking cover 2,400 houses, right? No. So how many? How many houses? The Let me just use this map. If you can see with me, uh, the basically the alignment of lower barriers, a creek project, is uh, basically from here. Edgewater Drive is the rubber band here, right? The area that you see in blue and kind of orange color along all the way to up the barriers at Creek Project, they add up to 2,400 parcels. Okay, so total houses between the points you mentioned is 24. That's correct. From and after the flood wall is built, how many houses will be spared of flood insurance? After the flood wall, the lower barriers at Creek Phase 2 is built. The blue area is flood plain, right? Yeah. So they need flood insurance. And the red area will be exempt. So what percentage is the red area compared to the whole? I will have to get back with you on that, but please don't quote me on this number. I think it's around 600 parcel. But don't quote me on that. We can, we can check that for you. The reason, the reason is because, the, the reason is because I want to go back to the other map is because you heard me mention the phase three of the project, which is Calera Creek and two Lacitos. And you can see the breakout point along Calera Creek. You see the, the orange area, that blue area and brown area is from the breaking out of Calera Creek. And so we need to open Berryessa Creek main stem first which is the phase two. The phase three is when we build a flood wall along Calera Creek to contain the breaking out point there and we will realize more partial protection. But if you refer to the previous map, it appears that at least just by looking into the map, this one, other one. This one, yes, this one here. So it appears just by looking at the area, only a small fraction of the houses will be spared from flood uh, insurance. That means the wall is not designed correctly, isn't it? Uh, again, I mentioned to you Calera and two Lacitos. I mentioned earlier, not just this meeting, but there is a phase three. Calera Creek and two Lacitos Creek discharge into the main stem of Berryessa Creek. And if you don't, if we don't open up the main stem of Berryessa Creek, and we go ahead and open up or contain Calera Creek and contain Tulacitos, you will have more flow going down to main stem Berryessa and cause, induce more flooding. So therefore, from for flood protection project, usually we work from downstream to upstream. You want to be open the downstream portion first, so that when you go upstream and open the upstream portion, 
the downstream will not be impacted. Similarly here, because Mary Essa Creek is a main stem, main creek, you have tributary creek discharging into Mary Essa. So you need to make sure Mary Essa main stem is wide enough to carry the flow that will be contained and discharged from the tributary creeks. The next phase is completed. All the blue areas will be also spared from flood insurance. Is that correct? The blue area that associated with breaking down from Berryessa, Calera, and Tulacitos. I, I would think so, yes. We have never concluded that anything lower would be sufficient to meet FEMA certification. So yes, we have made the decision to move forward with the original design of the original flip wall at the original location. I have another question here. Um, so this one-to-one uh, -one concrete inner lining, what is that? Is that, is that a proposal? Is that, what is that? Is that an option? Because that's, that's, that's something new, I see. That, 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 those were the options that I presented to the community the last time too. We just didn't have the sketch to show. But those are the two options that we looked at, and we determined that they were not feasible. So we did not look at that further. There is just no way for, number one, for the water district, our board, to approve building a trapezoid channel for flood protection with concrete line channel inside our creek. It's not the natural way that we do flood protection. Number two, there is just no way for any agency to apply for a permit to the regional board fishing game on the core to build a trapezoidal channel with concrete line inside uh, the creek. Because, because the way I see it, that's, to me, that's the most natural from an external viewpoint and you, you restore a walking trail on the Edgewater side um, as far as the is good, but that looks anyway, I'd like, I'd like to, but it's not an option now. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I just want to make sure I'm understanding it. So I know there's a 14-foot wall, that, that you said it. So this is the one we're going to get, you're going to just stick with that one instead of any of the other options you're not even going to because you, before you said something about permits might take half a year, nine months, a year or more. So you're not even submitting any of the of these. Then why are you putting up all these things for us right here, right now? And then you're just going back to that, that big wall right there. I can understand the 14 foot wall that you need. I can understand that you're putting you know, these up if, it's, if you're going to, you know, you can submit it to the water district and the other other places, but yeah, can you, can you make it? No, the, the intent is just to show you what that we have done with the community uh, since November, right? We started out with the original flood wall and we had that flooded incident and then we heard concern from community members and, we started meeting with you and we started working. So the intent is just to show you work that we have done up to date. Yeah, 
submitted? Because at this point in time, uh, we have determined that yes, permitting will cause delay at least a year, a, a season. We will miss this construction season, uh, and that will basically add another year to the construction contract. So uh, for you, the construction team, uh, that we just stick with that. So again, that's your opinion, but uh, there are 24 structures of homes and businesses along the creek that rely on this flood protection. So the delay, any delay that we add to this project will in turn add to delay to flood protection for the other 2,400 homes. And that will cause them to continue to, pro to purchase flood insurance Right, and then in the next two or three years, if we have that delay, and if we have a big storm coming up, and I'm not wishing for that, but why did we have flooded? We will hear from the community district. What have you done? What's taking you so long to provide flood protection for the community? We are trying to provide flood protection to the community as soon as we can. Next uh, question. Next question. I just wanted to say um, thank you so much for hosting this meeting. Um, I am a little bit surprised considering from the last meeting to this meeting that officially you're letting us know that you're just going to move forward with the original plan. Um, I, I just wanted to say that spending an extra year to help us the people who are going to live next to this flood protection that you're building, um, even if you took a year, and even if you spent $5 million, I get it, but compared to the big budget money we're spending for this whole project, and the fact that this, once it goes up, it will never go down for another 100 years, I think it's worth another year or six months of delay to make sure that we're not going to be stuck with something that we have to live with for the rest of our lives. Just
they want engineered drawings with calculation and dimensions to show changes that you are proposing. And in the last meeting, I was explaining to a person who asked the same question that it took about more than a hundred sheet of engineer drawing to make changes to the design that we are talking about. So it took us a few months since November 2016 to exchange ideas with you uh, and develop those uh, options. And even in the May 10 community meeting, the community just said none of the options met your expectation and you heard your neighbors sitting next to you there that none of these options met your expectation. All right, we have a, an, another hand raised or water. Good question over here. I just wanted to say, since the flood happened, it opened up our eyes wide. We're like, oh, okay, we can't flood. We understand that you are there to protect us from flooding. You you met with us soon after the flooding because that was an emergency meeting. We, we didn't know what was going on. You explained to us what was going on. You went back. You made these drawings. You came up with different options. We were happy and pleased that at least you're working with us. But I feel like you're just shutting the door down right now. And I just want to make sure that you don't do that. You, you stay either open communicating with us to help us out as community residents, or this will probably end in a manner that we probably both don't want, and we don't need. We don't need extra wasted money and time. But we are looking to for other options because we feel like we're getting stuck with a plan that you guys proposed many years ago. And I moved into this community in 2010. I bought my house in 2012. Nobody told me there was a wall coming. And I have the email to prove it that I paid $20,000 more for whatever little bit I had in front of my house. The fact I didn't have any other residents. I get it. I get it. It's not about the $20,000. But I'm just saying, I didn't know this wall was coming. So why should I have to suffer for the rest of my life looking at a wall because this was planned 2010? And yet the residents didn't know about it until we got the letter to remove everything off the levy. I don't know whose fault it is for not letting us know ahead of, ahead of time. I am aware of the meeting that happened July 2015, I believe. It just happened, I wasn't in town. But at that moment, I don't think everybody knew what was about to hit us. So people got the postcards and maybe didn't pay attention, but I honestly feel back in the time when you were planning this phase, you should have really came to Masters. You should have really came to us and say, this is what we're building. You guys should go to the meetings if you have anything to say. Nobody did that. And I just, I'm assuming all the residents felt they were just vague. It was just for everybody, nobody. So I just want you to know, as an LPS resident, I'm really, really, really disappointed in how this whole project even happened. And I get you're trying to protect 20, 2000, over 2,000 parcels. I get it. And we're not saying we don't want protection. We're just saying you got to work with us on the fact that we're going to be stuck with whatever it is you're building. We're going to be stuck with it, not you. Yes, I get it. I understand what happened to the Coyote Creek and all these residents filing loose lawsuits and, and, and blaming and pointing fingers at each other. I get it. That could happen again. I know you're trying to eliminate that. But just work with us. And even if it took six months to a year to get the extra permit, it'd be a lot better helping us out and not leaving us out in the dust but just the wall for the next hundred years. Thank you. Just a question. How many how many people are directly involved, in, affected by this uh, road? In other words, how many units are there that uh, do have the view of the road? You know, how many houses? Do you know the number? Visually? Pretty much, uh, 
uh, we are working at uh, additional two years of welfare protection and uh, looking at the facts. Alright, I see the hand up in the back. So, was there a vote taken on any of these designs? Or did you, because somebody said, oh, I don't like anything, did you just say, okay, nobody likes anything? Because I don't remember voting for any of these designs, and there's definitely more designs that I like than the first one. So, so was there a formal vote? The, the, the option that we've developed, we look internally within the water district. Uh, we talked to our contractor, uh, trying to determine uh, the potential additional cost if we have one year delay to the construction contract, two years delay to the construction contract, and the risk and uncertainty about obtaining the permit amendments from the REC agency, and the unknown question about how much more mitigation they would require, and cost to pay for all of that that we currently don't have. Those are very high risk and high potential costs uh, that we don't have. And on top of that, the potential delay of a year or more to provide flood protection for the community at large that we decided that we will not move forward with any of the options that we've been looking at. We did not get a vote. Basically, you gave us the options and then you decided that no, none of these are going to work because of the way it affects you. I mean, that's because I know I don't think you did get a vote. You could have said, said that nobody liked any designs. The, the, right. objectives, the, the objective is to provide flood protection for the community as soon as we can within the budget constraint and the timing that we have. And so that's the overarching uh, consideration that we have for this project. We do have permits already for the current design. And we do have funding set aside to finish this project by December 2018. And any other options in that, we look at it and it just more cost and more uncertainty into the completion schedule. Another question over here. Uh, uh, so I'm sorry, I did not attend last May 10th meeting, so you might have answered this. But given the time, let's say you have a time, and let's say we are okay to eat that cost, do you think it's possible in the designs to have flood protection for 100 years that, that we all want? and still have the height of the wall less than 40 feet, or it's based on the you know the expertise that you have, uh, or no matter what we do, we might do a little bit modification, but we still would have a wall of 30 to 40 feet. Okay, I think that, that issue has been discussed at length, and the bottom line is whether we have a levee or a flood wall, it will have to be 14 feet, and, and there's a reason for that. And, and it's in, uh, the information is in the question and answer. So if you're not familiar with that, you can, you can reveal that. It will have to be 14 feet high. And I just want to point out that under the frequently asked questions, question number one, it's how does the water district determine the flood wall's height? And there's a lot more explanation there. And if you email us, um, we're happy to send any other additional information to you. So uh, I don't know if you guys got a chance to evaluate those and are they feasible or are they uh, something worth considering? So the, I understand the 14 foot wall was decided. But you mentioned about if you go with any of the other options for the wall itself, that there is risk and more cost. So the risk is to the community. If you know how much cost there is, 
I mean, even if it's one year delay, have you, did, do you know? So we have, and, and sorry, I have a follow-up is, why, why is there uncertainty if we go, let's say, with this option as opposed to that? Because you say, you seem to indicate that it may take one year or it may take two years. We, the water district is uh, just like city of Bipinas. We are regulated by regulatory agency. So we need permits, construction permits from the other agency for any uh, proposed modification to creek. So in this case, we already have permits for the original design. And if we are talking about changing, narrowing the width of the creek from the permitted design, that is a major change. And that will require agency review and approval. And that review and approval step is, it can take six months to nine months to a year or more than that. And on top of that, they will require additional mitigation for repairing, planting for aquatic habitat with a narrower corridor, creek corridor, and that's the unknown. So, uh, back in November, or whenever it was when we had the last meeting, the, the, the agency did not know that this was required because these options were offered, right? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm asking, back in November, when these options were given to us, did you guys not know that there was, it was not possible? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, these options weren't available in November. We started meeting with the community in November, and I believe since then, the first time we had some sketches, some con conceptual idea to share with you, based on your input, is from January. And then from January, we started developing more details. These are brand new concepts based on various meetings and discussion with with uh, your community. Question we did not we did not know them in November. Question over here. Yeah, uh, you said you wanted to provide us with the flood protection as quick as possible, and you said that our last big flood was 1982, correct? The big the big flood that happened in 1982. I mean, we've had quite a bit of rain this year, and we we were okay with it. We only flooded once, and I think everybody know why we flooded. Was it because of the rain? It was because of something else. And I just want you to keep in mind that it's not just the 32 houses that you're affecting by doing that, that big wall over there. Because just because they live on that street, it's the whole community that you're affecting, not, not just the people who see it. I mean, I live in back, I don't live on Edgewater, but I walk every day. A lot of our neighbors, you know, walk every day around that area, even in the terrace area. So you're not just affecting these 32 homes, which might sound just oh, 32, it's just nothing. Excuse me. But you're you're affecting the whole entire neighborhood. So just just keep in mind and just please, you know, just to think half a year, one year, you know, to you it might be. It might cost a lot, but to us, like you know, my neighbor said, it's going to be for the rest of our lives because we're, I mean, we're not planning to move. So a lot of people who are, who are living there now don't want to move or just planning to just, you know, stay there forever, and then their children might want to stay there forever. So keep that in mind. Uh, yes, uh, a few different points. One is to keep, keep, keep referencing the County Creek flooding. You have to look at, there's a much different scenario there. You've got a watershed, a very large watershed, going into Lake Anderson, coming down. So there is a much larger capacity and volume there that you, that you know you have to move. So to try to compare that to what we've got in Berryessa Creek is apples and oranges. It, it's not the same comparison. Um, as was just mentioned, the only flooding we've had in our neighborhood in, in the 25 years that I've, uh, our family's been there has been when you removed the levee just before a big storm. That's the only time we've ever gotten close to flooding. Uh, so the, 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 I understand you're making other improvements, so you know, we're, we're currently not having to pay, pay for insurance because we're already uh, considered uh, in the 100 year protection. So the changes you're making upstream are what's affecting us. Uh, but if you put a wall in there, that wall also is gonna be a, a earthquake hazard. 
uh, you know, it's not if, it's when we get a big earthquake. And I can see big, large boulders coming off that thing, falling on people and cars and flying through the air. Uh, and if they get a good crack in that, you've got more of a chance of flooding. So the, the flood uh, levees are a much safer design for the long term also. We're less likely to have um, problems with a flood levy than a, that flood wall. So you know, we've asked you to look at other designs. Um, and actually, uh, uh, Darrow has actually drawn up a nice thing here. I don't know if you had a chance to look at his notes here. But uh, basically similar to the, uh, to the third chart on the right, uh, does show a similar idea there um, of doing one to one on the outside and one to one and a half on the inside of the, of the, uh, the levees and being able to provide still enough of a channel. And the other thing that came up in your last meeting is if you realized that your period strip, apparently because of the wooded art, that that wasn't factored into the hydrology reports. So there's a discrepancy there. We're finding more and more discrepancies in your, in your numbers. And, and this 14-foot wall you keep mentioning, when I was at the meeting with you guys down at the water district offices, that question was come up, why 14 feet? You guys had never really given us an accurate answer on that. You keep saying, yeah, well, that's what you figured out. But the, your numbers are not adding up. Somebody needs to take a closer look at your numbers and, and really determine what are the real needs. Not just try to shove this 14-foot wall down our throat and saying you've got to get it done for flood protection. We have the flood protection now. So by, by making these changes, it doesn't mean it's going to give us any more protection. So it sounds like you guys are not listening to us. You guys are nodding in your head, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you guys are not going back and doing your numbers. You're just kind of coming up with, you came up with some alternatives that you said, okay, well, let's see, we'll see if we can bait them with this and see if that works. And then now you're saying, no, that now, now we're pulling that off the table. But you haven't really looked at a levy to levy design that, that, as we have showed you, that can work. So why haven't you gone back and double checked all your numbers and make sure that, that you can do this without having to, to put a wall there? So we will continue to have different opinions. No, it's not different of opinion. Listen. We have gone back and triple checked the levy levy option. The 14 foot bubble, you never came back with what actually justified that number. The, the 14 foot elevation was determined based on the projected flow to be carried by the creek in order to convey the 100 year storm. And on top of that, in order to, for FEMA to certify a flood protection structure, we need to add a factor of safety on top of the surface, water surface elevation. And for levee and a flood wall, FEMA require a safety factor of three feet. So but when you've got you, a safety factor of like 10 feet right now. We didn't get, get close to flooding with all, that, with all the rain we got this past season. Flooding in uh, County Creek. We didn't get anywhere near flooding. Just, just, for, just for the record, the rain gauges in the Mu Peters area measure the flow in Berryessa Creek is equivalent, equivalent to a five-year storm event. So granted that you receive a lot of rainfall this year, but the rain gauge, the stream flow, the stream gauges that we had indicated that the flow that you receive is equivalent to just about five years. Uh, so just, just for your information, just because it, it rained in the Peters and rain in San Jose doesn't mean that you will receive the same flow. That's what San Jose just happened to have more flow into the creek. All right, I, I just want to point out, I just want to remind everyone of our ground rules. We do want to make sure we get to everybody and hear everybody's opinion, um, and I think we can do that if you raise your hand and we'll go back and forth with the microphone. So I know over here, he's had, had his hand up for a while, and then we'll go back over here. So thank you. Angela, sorry. I'll go first. So just to recap what we discussed in maintenance meeting, I think one of the primary reasons they need a 14 feet levy and also 14 feet flood wall increased from eight and a half feet levy that we, we used to have sufficient for 100 year flood protection was due to, actually I talked to several district staff, was due to the mitigation of the tree and shrub removal 
from the land in the past that we used to have. All the trees being removed from the land in order to mitigate, they have to pull the trees and shrub in the middle of the creek for 50 feet. And the whole project, the whole crop protection project, the primary goal is should be increasing the channel capacity, not to reduce the channel capacity or reduce the bottom of the channel width. But this design here, the reason why we have the so high of the levee, so tall the levee, and also flat wall, all because of the mitigation. And in the EIR 3-3-49 page, say if the mitigation of the tree or shrub removal, if you if the, the plan is to plant the trees in within the ROW right of the way, will reduce the channel capacity. Then water district should work with city of New Peters. We have a representative from city of New Peters, like Nina in the back, and also other staff. District should work with city of New Peters to find other places to mitigate this tree and shrub removal. <coughs> this way, it will open up, increase the channel capacity, and reduce the water level. So now, since <laughs> thank you. And now, since water district and the U.S. Army Corps, because of our previous project damages so much wetland, and so suddenly you have a disagreement with water quality board, so initiate a lawsuit against the water quality board. Because the mitigation requires 13,000 square acre of wetland and also all three, three miles creek. We would propose suddenly waiting until you settle with that, move the tree somewhere else. And then you will be able to lower the water, water, level, water service level. And then everybody will be happy. We got a flood protected. We don't have to salt off the flood, the levee, or the, we don't even need a flood, flood wall. Compared to, if, you, if you're talking about the concrete line of the levee, it's not natural. Thinking about flower wall, do we call that flower wall natural? No. Not at all either. Just an observation. Um, yes, you have had three meetings and and come and nicely propose different um, scenarios. Uh, the way I see it as an observation is that that was all during the winter time. It was convenient for you to do that to show us good faith. And now that construction season is full speed ahead, if I understand this correctly, you're going straight to the wall again, the original plan. So all this, you know, it's, it's, it's like the last six months you gave us a bunch of lip service and you've gone back to the original plan with the permit. And that. And that, that doesn't sit very well with me, and obviously everybody else here. I, you know, if you, if, if you lived in front of that, I wonder uh, what your opinion would be. I, I bet you would be sitting right here with us. How many people would like that house? Would you like that across the street from your house? Answer that question. Would you like that across the street from your house? Yes or no? <laughs> that, that answers the question right there. That was the answer that tells us if you don't like the sign. All right, I think I saw another hand over here. I do want to remind everyone, we need to be respectful of everybody in the room. So, thank you. You need to be respectful of us too, please. because I saw pictures from residents at um, Beresford Village. They, they're they sending us pictures, letting us know that there's graffiti already on the fence that's protecting them, the privacy fence from the construction, sorry. Um, there's graffiti on that fence. That's my name. What's gonna happen with big graffiti on that? Are we gonna paint it? Are we gonna go out there and scrub it? I, I don't understand what's the maintenance gonna be for us. We're the ones who's gonna have to live with it. So what are you suggesting for that now that you made your decision to stick with that wall? Oh yeah, and who's gonna clean out the, the levee inside, right? And whatever. <laughs> so any improvements done by the district, the water district is responsible for maintaining. Water so is responsible for maintaining inside and outside? Any 
descriptive. Yes, yeah, so the first of all, let me answer the question about graffiti. So if you see a graffiti there, that is a hotline, graffiti hotline with the water district that you can just phone it with your phone app or you get on the web page or you can call one of the staff and we will assign it to our graffiti removal program that they respond. Uh, that, that way that they can take it over, they can... Uh, yes, they can take it or they can uh, pressure... Well, it, they will match. They will match the same color. The pressure washing. You're about to say something about sandblasting. Yeah. So they they the way to remove it, but it will be they will try to match the existing color as much as possible. There's a question about trees and vegetation inside the creek. Uh, that will be the responsibility of the water district uh, operation and maintenance unit as well. Those were to be understood as that the homework has already been done. It seems like it, that was just me talking or me coming up with design. You came up with the design, and now you are saying that it wasn't even uh, shown to any regulatory or something that is this option will work because it was just in house work. And same thing now you are saying the maintenance will be done, it will be there. Probably will it be written somewhere in the contract that yes. In the graffiti or something, in two days they'll come and fix it, or they will wait like I don't know months and months to come and fix it. Plus the inside maintenance, where is it? Will it be written or contract will be shown that yes they'll come and do it, or it's again more like somebody has to complain, and then it, the action will be taken, and that can take I don't know how long. Yeah. So with an engineer channel like this, that is a, a baseline condition. So it will give instruction to our O&M staff how much vegetation, how much sediment builder uh, that would be allowed without impacting the capacity of the creek to convey flow. So we monitor that our O&M staff, uh, they do inspection of uh, levee, of flood wall, of inside creeks uh, throughout the county each year and they develop a maintenance plan to get permit to do maintenance. Also, the option that you said um, that each proposed initially, and now that it's not feasible, is this is there some written agreement from team saying that yes, this will be rejected, or this was just an all talk? This is evaluation from uh, my engineering team uh, who are familiar with working on flood protection design, uh, permitting, uh, and planning. So they are the one who created it, and now they are saying it's not good. That's correct. Do you have this wall already constructed in any of the creeks around the Bay Area that you are aware of? Is there first a 14 foot flood wall around any creek? In the Bay Area that you're aware of. Ron, if you go by MC Streets, they're starting to build that wall. Well, I know. I already know. That's part of this construction, though. That's the base group. Yeah, that's what's probably going to look like. Right. But my question would be is this existence in the Bay Area, in any of the creeks that are uh, maintained by Santa Clara Valley Water District? Yes, they are San Francisco Creek, there's Guadalupe River. There's 14 foot flood. Yes. I might just have to make it. Yes, so, so you go to Guadalupe River uh, underneath Highway 280 yep. crossing. You should see a, a flood wall on both sides. So this is the close to the museum? It's upstream of the museum. Okay. Yeah. yeah, there's no residents though, right? There's no houses getting this. Yes, okay. they are. <laughs> you answered my question, which is thank yes. you so much. Yes, yes. yes. just FYI for that project. We bought 56 homes and we abandoned one street in order to widen the creek. So there are residents there. Yes. You just said you bought up one. You bought one. Yeah. 
There's home throughout the valley, right on that street. We bought home on one side of the street in order to widen the channel and build a home. Else? But there's still home existing on the other side. Are the effects <coughs> of life our community would be honestly? They, are they were they affected like we are affected by this wall? Yes, that's good wall. <laughs> uh, is it right in front of your community? Is this like the height of your community? It's right behind the backyard. Oh, okay. So you know what? If this wasn't my backyard, I wouldn't even play. Now actually not my yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Some of the Skibo Creek, we built a third wall, uh, lower Silver Creek, we just finished the train of third wall. So you go to uh, Silver Creek. And no, no, downstream, downstream of Able Avenue, downstream of Able Avenue <laughs> on Berryessa, we just finished construction December 2016. And those communities didn't put up outside? Just for no, no, I, I don't, I don't know what fight means, but we went. It, this is a fight for our it's, it's, it's the same planet. It's not a separate project. The downstream Abel Avenue to uh, Penitentiary Creek mm -hmm. is part of the Lower Barriers Creek project. But again, that's we, behind the homes. Though. It is behind the homes. Not in, not same, the same with the first phase you did. Yeah. Those homes, it's in their backyard. Yeah. Nobody cares. It's both the same. It's 14 feet high. Yes. Doesn't cost a lot of money. 
It's the time waiting negotiated for permit that will translate into cost. For example, if it takes us a year or two years, the original permit, it took us three years. So each year of delay to a major construction contract, like that, this is a $39 million construction contract, each year that you prohibit your contractor to do work, there is a cost associated with that. So each year delay, roughly it's about two and a half to three million dollars for this type of contract. So if permitting takes one year, two year, so just roughly it's about two and a half to three million dollars a year paying to the contractor for not doing work. Number two is when you go into negotiation for a permit amendment for a major change to a design like this, the regulatory agency will require you to provide more mitigation. And that's unknown. The mitigation has what it means is additional cost and where to provide mitigation and how much it is. Some of you may have followed the news and Mr. Chu mentioned earlier uh, the Upper Barriessa Creek project that the Corps of Engineers uh, is the lead federal agency in design and construction. The regional board issued permit to the region to the Corps of Engineers last year, so they began construction. This year, the regional board rescinded the permit and reissued a new permit. The new permit you heard Mr. Chu mention, or some of the community members may have followed in the news or media. They require 20 more acres of mitigation. There were no design changes in that, in that project. It is in the middle of the construction. They rescinded the old permit and issued a new one. We went into negotiation with that for six months and we couldn't convince them not to do it. They rescinded the permit and they put in 20 acres of mitigation. That will cost 10 to 20 more million dollars if they go forward, if we have to provide that. And that's why you heard Mr. Chu mention that there is some litigation going on between the water district and the regional board because we don't feel it, it was done properly and we don't have money to pay for that. And, and so keep in mind, if we go to the agency with changes, that project had no changes to the design. This one, we have changes and going into permit request, review approval, there will be significant mitigation requirement uh, for, the, for the proposed changes and time. Question over here. Sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I hear what you're saying and, and we hear what you're saying, but listen carefully to what we're saying. We're saying, do, do what it takes. Take the time, you know, get, try to get the permits. I, we understand if you, if you if you try, you know, you submit it and then it comes back, you know, we, we, we don't get the permits or whatnot. But at least try to do it. And, and I know there's a representative from Kenton Chu's office or the I hope, you know, city of Lupita's people are, are listening to what we're saying because he's listening, but he's, but he's hearing but he's not listen, listening to what we want and the, what we need. So that's just what I'm saying. Do what it takes or at least try. At least try. You're not even submitting any of these things in. And you're saying, well, it's not because it takes too much time. It takes too much of your money. That's what, I, that's, that's what I'm hearing and I'm listening. But you need to not hear, but you need to listen. We have a question. Uh, I just want to share that at one of the earlier community meetings, it was explained to us that it's called the 100 year flood because it was a 1% chance of flooding every year. And in my mind, I appreciate that you guys are emphasizing flood protection for us and for the community. But in my mind, it's worth it. If we're going to wait another six to nine months to permit, I'm willing to risk another half a percent to one percent flood. Considering you have all these residents that are upset with this project, 
and you're willing to make it better for everybody, wouldn't they kind of expedite the process of the permit? Especially Mayor Tran is not here today. Mayor Tran is really aware of what's going on. And I'm just curious, like, wouldn't it work? Wouldn't, wouldn't you try to get it expedited to, to get it done in time? Yeah, just FYI, the Upper Barriers Creek project, I mentioned to you that the water district is in litigation with the regional board. The purpose of one of the purpose of that project is to provide benefit to the new Bikita Sports Station. And the regional board came back and said, hey, here's a new permit. Here are new per per mitigation requirements. You mentioned that ex explain to the agency to expedite it. Yes, the agency expedited for the Upper Barriessa Creek project without design change. They expedited by issuing a new permit with new mitigation requirements. With twenty more million dollars. I, I am sorry too. I am sorry too because as an agency, we would rather spend that extra money to do Calera Creek and Chulacito and all the creeks in Bipinas, in San Jose, and in Santa Clara County for the community at large. This project provides flood protection for 2,400 homes. And it's just too much risk for a flood protection agency like the Water District and Bipinas to consider delaying a year without knowing that a year will be enough. It could be two years or it could be three years. We, we have been very lucky that the last winter storm didn't have a lot of runoff in Bipedas, and I'm very thankful for that. There's no guarantee that it's a 1%, 1% happen. And you may have, on record, you may have two 100-year flood in consecutive year. It could happen. It doesn't mean that in a year that you have 1% chance, but yes, 1% chance. But there is a possibility that you may have back to back 1% chance in consecutive year. It could happen. So, you know, we are thankful that we haven't experienced significant flooding in this area. And so, more motivation for us to quickly complete the flood protection as soon as we can so that the people are currently in the flood lane that, that are currently paying flood insurance. Uh, can be relief of that uh, financial burden, you know, as soon as we can. And it's just too much, too much risk and liability for the water district and for city Bikinis to delay providing flood protection for the community. You are not required to purchase flood insurance now is because that flood plain map was done in 2001. FEMA requires update of the flood plain on a regular basis, so it has been 16 years. When we update the flood plain uh, with the current hydrologic information, current dimension of the creek conveyance capacity, and the topography, the development of the city. I show you the map when you earlier in the slide. When we update that information, your area for sure will be in the FEMA floodplain, the new floodplain when we file it. If we don't do the project now, three, four, five years from now, you're going to be screaming at me at Director Santos, what are you doing? Why aren't you protecting us? It was rain, but they didn't have the right pump. 
All right, I see a question here and then a question in the back. And then I guess with all the respect, Mr. No, we are all speaking from our hearts. And yeah, at the end of the day, it's going to cost money, money, money. But we're also looking as residents. We live here, we pay taxes, we're providing citizens. But we're just telling you, please, do something so that we're not going to be living at a good as well. I live alongside of you, right? And the two comments that I have are the noise, the dirt, and also the repeating. It was the most important thing for me. It was not to see any graffiti. And yes, just from the green tarp, we have graffiti already. So you know what that means? Crime. Crime is going to happen in our neighborhood. But Lupita's, before all this, was a very safe and idyllic community, at least for a reason, which is along the green bed. So please listen to what we're saying. And the question that I have is, Mr. Rick Santos, you have been elected and you have represented us and you will continue to represent us. So you hear our pleas, our concerns. We live in this area. We love the Peters, and that's why we've stayed here for 20 odd something years. Can you please do something so that you know we're not here screaming our heads off, you know, telling us all these, telling you all these things, telling them to do something. Would you please advocate for us? So that in the next meeting, hopefully there will be something else other than the 14 foot flood wall. We understand the risks. We're not stupid. We see the media. We read the papers. There are issues about flooding, you know, in, in this area and also over there in Coyote Creek. But we were thinking that over on our side, it's not as bad. Okay, so maybe delaying from here at $20 million just so that we have a more natural environment rather than a, an environment now that may be crime invested in that, you know, that graffiti and, and the, and whatever, homelessness, crime, whatever it is that's going to attract um, all the, you know, the stuff that we don't want because of that flood. So that's, you know, that, that's my, that's our comments collectively. And we're asking Mr. Rich Santos, if you want to address this right now, that would be, that would be helpful. What is it to do for us? So that maybe the next meeting or whatever, you know, we'll be at peace with them. But I 
I've been living with Peter since 1987, and there was a big flooding by Gibson Landing, and those apartments were flooded to the second floor. And I recall that I had to purchase eventually the flood insurance. And currently I live in Terrace, Beresford Terrace. And uh, I had to, uh, the bank sent me a few years back that we are to uh, have the flood insurance. So are we in a flood insurance currently or we are not? Because I am paying it. So if I am paying it and I am not supposed to, to check it for you, uh, make sure you leave your name and address with one of our comment cards. We can pass it on to our community project review unit and they can verify your address to see whether or not you are currently in the floodplain or not. So that we can do. inside the creek. The water district will never mitigate for landscape tree inside the creek. Inside the creek is very valuable. We don't have land. And so we reserve that if we have to provide mitigation planted for that, it will have to be for quote unquote riparian vegetation trees impact from the project. The landscaping tree that you mentioned, we are free to provide planting outside of the creek 
anywhere along outside the creek, any part. So that's okay. So I just don't want you to mix up or other people to misunderstand that we mitigate landscape tree inside the creek. We don't do that. So the question will be for other areas of creek, why is the mitigation requirement for acres of acres of wet land and those ore come up with us three mile miles of the creek? Mr. Ch mitigation. Mr. Chu, I am personal as you. So we are asking the regional board that question, so you don't have to ask me. We because ask the regional board that question. Why? Because other, other areas of creek you draw by every day. We saw beautiful trees, we saw beautiful greenness along the creek. Now it's all damaged. It's all damaged. And same here. You're looking, you're looking at a, Mr. Sintos and so so the, uh, who is the representative from uh, Mr. Chu's office. Please drive by the Milpitas Boulevard Bridge and looking looking at the uh, eastwards, looking at the British World Village side. Look at how ugly that is now. We had a picture taken before. It was beautiful, beautiful places to live. It's now all damaged. It's all gone. <clears throat> to us, it's not a mitigation to mitigate those trees in the, in the middle of the creek. It doesn't, it doesn't, co it doesn't, it doesn't consider mitigation for us. And having a having a beautifier floodwall services doesn't consider literally a good enough mitigation for us either. So I'll make sure the next time I negotiate perfect condition. I will seek, seek out for your help because those are the condition impact to riparian vegetation must be provided inside the creek. It has to provide the same value for wildlife habitat impact to landscape trees outside the creek. We will never use them inside the creek because. That's what the gas says. Okay, so I am sorry you, you read it that way, but I, my assurance to you is that we do not mitigate for landscape impact inside the creek. Uh, I don't know where you get that information, but I can assure you that that, that is not happening. Yeah, well, just the last meeting, you guys made a statement that said that there was, uh, at the end of the meeting, it was discovered that, that 30 feet of mitigation area inside the creek that had the trees and stuff, Turned out it was not factored in as part of the hydrology because of that, um, which is what what's driving the, the height of the wall. So that was the thing we, we thought after that that maybe you guys had an aha moment, and then you guys would go back and check the numbers and be able to rework this to be able to to recalculate the hydrology. So it sounds like now you guys are going back on that now too. Is that correct? Now you're saying that this that uh, that, that that 30 foot thing that you said you found that, that we might be able to work with is now not not, not the case now. I, I, I'm not sure I understand your question. Daryl, do you remember that discussion with them? That discussion last time, that, that, that just that with the, the trees, they were saying that, that because the trees in there, that was not calculated as far as the hydrology. That's right. And so that, that was driving the uh, height and width of the channel. That's right. Because that whole area the, was not factored in. Right. Because so of it, the trees being there, which they shouldn't be there to begin with. If, if I understand your question, you were, the question was, the trees, the riparian planted area that we show in for the project, if they were considered in our hydraulic modeling, my answer on May 10 was that yes, we incorporated that area with trees, and we would my my wording, if I re could recall correctly, is that we would block it out, that we don't we don't consider that as part of the creek that convey the flow. In technically, how a hydraulic engineer model and show it in, in a hydraulic model is that he or she would assign, they call it, I'm sorry, I'm getting some terminology that may not be familiar with to you, but they call it the roughness co coefficient. So in an area where the 30 foot planted area, they would assign a very high value of roughness coefficient, meaning it's a lot of friction that doesn't allow a lot of water to move through. And that my intent when I say that we would block it out, in my mind it's the same as 
say that our hydraulic engineer would assign a very high end value, a roughness value, so that, yes, so the answer is, I'm still stand behind that answer is that, yes, the area that we are proposing to plant in the channel have been incorporated into the hydraulic model to make sure that with the trees there, mature trees, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, that they will not impact the conveyance capacity or the elevation of the water in the creek bed. Okay. And they don't need to be removed because they were designed to be there and they were designed to work with the hydraulic hydrology in the, in the area. I thought we were having like a flood control problem. When you're planting all these trees, you're, you're creating flood. Ten years from now, with the trees there, you, you know, you're just blocking up the channel. Uh, you misunderstand it again. I'm not the, the, I saw this happen over there at the Guadalupe on Trimble Road. All those trees there, I mean, you know, what if one of those big chunk of tree broken, you know, fall down, it's going to block the channel. You know, there's going to cause flood there. Yes. So the but tree. 10 years from now, or 20 years from now, we are going to have a flood. Once the trees mature, it's going to block the channel. You're not doing flood control anymore. Well, but again, the trees were modeled hydraulically to show that when they are mature, they will not interfere with the conveyance capacity. So can, I can assure you of that, that the trees, the repairing planting inside the creek has been properly modeled to make sure that they don't impact uh, the conveyance capacity. Now, you're talking about what a tree fall down. That, that will happen anywhere, anytime. So our O&M, that's our job throughout the year is to monitor and to make sure that we remove blockages uh, along creeks or bridges or set up and build up, right? I mean, that's our job too, to maintain it. Well, our job is to maintain the creek. So when was the last time that you reported the tree falling down in any creek? Uh, again, my answer to that is Kyori Creek in that area is not an engineered. So, so if we want to have a discussion about Coyote Creek, I just want to explain to you that Coyote Creek. We want something better than a wall. Coyote Creek is not an engineered channel, so there is no maintenance guideline on how to maintain the tree. The frame can be 
again, it should be higher than a BRIT. It should be or should not be? It should not be. Okay, so that is not the blood wall itself. No, but what you see is the framing, the membrane, to, to give you the texture of the, the rock, the boulder look. So it's just a membrane, the template. Sediment deposition is a natural occurrence in the creek. And so we monitor. So when, when sediment build up, get to a certain elevation that may impact the conveying capacity, that's when we go in and we remove it. Uh, when we remove sediment, uh, we don't put it back there. We haul it outside for reuse or disposal offside. And sediment removal is one of the major stream maintenance activities that we do every every summer. We we have jurisdiction about 200 miles of creek throughout the county, and sediment removal activity is one of the major activities that we focus during the summertime. It it has the same uh, time constraint as a construction project in the creek. We can only be in the creek doing sediment removal, uh, vegetation removal from June 15 to October 15. All right, I just want to acknowledge at this time that it is uh, 9.05. Um, it looks like we've lost a few people as the night has gotten on. I just want to see, are there still some questions out in the community, um, any new questions that we can answer? I'll just take a poll right now. Okay, it looks like then that we're ready to conclude the question and answer portion of the meeting. Um, I want, I'm putting it back out there if anyone has any last questions. We, we're here tonight, we want to answer those. Um, but if you ha think of anything else, feel free to email me directly. You have the con uh, comment card as well, and all of those comments that I receive and feedback and um, opinions go straight to our project team. So um, thank you again, all, everyone, for being here tonight. And um, as a reminder, we'll continue to have an open dialogue with you as we enter into continuing the construction along the Edgewater Drive. So um, with that, I'll adjourn the meeting and thank you again for coming tonight.